Hey everyone, this is David Brown with a migration update for April 5th, 2022 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. I didn't take any scenery photos today, but the weather was mostly cloudy in the morning and then becoming sunny in the afternoon, and the winds were mostly out of the northeast, which would normally mean that we would move into Frisbee Hill, but actually the flight, which was mostly turkey vultures, stayed uh, pretty close to the platform, so we stayed at Braddock Bay Park all day. All right, let's jump into the bird photos and let's start off with this bald eagle. And you can see it's nearly a full adult, but not quite. It still has quite a bit of white specking on the underside and maybe a little bit of dark still in the head and tail. So I'd bet next year this bird will look like a full adult. Here's the first northern rough-winged swallow of the year. You can see that rough-winged swallows are brown on top. And they have basically some brown or gray that extends from the throat onto the upper breast. The other swallow that we have that is brown is bank swallow. And they're quite a bit smaller, actually. And they have a lot more white on the underside. The throat is bright white. And the underside is bright white. And then they have a very obvious brown breast band. So uh, we'll keep an eye out for those maybe in the coming weeks. But this is a rough wing swallow. Here we have a light morph rough-legged hawk, and this appears to be an adult male, and those tend to have um, more of a bibbed appearance on the underside, a bib on the upper breast throat area, and then some markings on the belly. Uh, dark trailing edge to the wing indicates adult, and the adult males usually have multiple tail bands, although from this angle that's hard to see. Here we have an excipitor that passed close to the platform. And what do we see on this bird? So first of all, it's pushing its wrists forward and it has a very small head. And the other thing we see is that the tail feathers all appear to be the same length, which gives the tail a squared off appearance. Overall, the bird seems more compact rather than lanky. So all of those things combined make this a sharp shinned hawk rather than a Cooper's hawk. And this horizontal orange barring indicate that this bird is an adult. Here we have a belted kingfisher that was hovering in place and looking below it to see if it had any snacks that it could grab from the water. And we know that this is a male because there's no brown on the underside, just some blue. Here's a species that I had never had before for the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch, and that is ring-necked pheasant. I'm not sure of the exact status of pheasants in New York State, but if it's anything like Pennsylvania, most of the pheasants that birders come across are ones that are stocked for hunting. Here we have a turkey vulture that had no tail, which is something that we see occasionally, and it gives them a bit of a flying wing kind of look. It reminds me of some of those older experimental flying wing airplanes that you see from like the World War II era. Here we have another belted kingfisher, and this one is a female, and we can tell that because in addition to the blue, it also has this brown color. Here we have some double crested cormorants, and from a distance they can look pretty ugly, but from close up they actually have some pretty cool colors with some yellow on the face and the blue eye, and if you look in the inside of their mouth, I believe that's also blue. And the one thing that you can tell from a distance when you have a flock and you're wondering are these cormorants or are these Canada geese is that cormorants when they're flying in a flock take turns gliding so sometimes just being able to see that from a distance um, lets you know that it's cormorants and not geese when geese are flying in a flock all of them are just always constantly flapping here we have an American kestrel that was facing into the wind and hovering while hunting here we have an osprey that was hunting, and I think just the thing I want to point out about this photo is just the overall way that ospreys hold their wings. Their wings are usually kind of drooping, and just that combination of really lanky and drooping wings is very distinctive for ospreys. I always think of it, um, especially when they're gliding towards you, it's kind of like the McDonald's M, just that, uh, that distinctive shape that distinguishes it from other large birds like bald eagles and turkey vultures. Here we have a really nice looking immature bald eagle. This is kind of like a fourth year type plumage 
where the bird is starting to look like an adult, where the head is mostly white, the tail is mostly white. Um, but this bird still has a ton of white throughout the whole underside, which I think just gives it a, a really cool look. Um, most birds of this age would be mostly dark underneath and just have a little bit of white. But uh, this bird definitely stood out and it gave us a nice close look, as you can see. Here we have a northern harrier. And at first I was going to call this an adult female because of the streaking on the upper breast. But actually then I was wondering if this might actually be a juvenile because some juveniles should, can show streaking on the upper breast. We see it doesn't really go down super far down onto the belly and we see that the patagial areas are pretty unmarked. So I'm thinking this might actually be a juvenile. And this was probably the bird of the day. This is an immature golden eagle. So how do we know it's a golden eagle? Uh, the one thing I would point out is the size of the head in comparison to the size of the tail. Even from this angle, the head looks very small compared to the much longer tail. And also just the way it was flying, the, it was holding its wings up in a slight V rather than that more flat uh, profile we see on bald eagles. And you can also see just a tiny hint of a white patch on the wing. And most immature golden eagles show white patches in the middle of the wings and the base of the tail, um, but not all of them. Some immatures have dark wings, but um, any time that we see these distinct white patches just in the center of the wings and the base of the tail, that would be a golden eagle. Um, on this bird, it's tough to, to pick out those field marks, so from... The distance and the lighting conditions, we were mostly going off of the shape and flight style. But through the spotting scope, I was able to confirm that it had small white patches on the wings. So this is only the second golden eagle we've had this season, which seems a little bit low compared to most years. But hopefully those numbers will start to pick up. And also congratulations to Bill, who this was a life bird for. And here we have a Bonaparte's gall, which is one of the smallest galls that we see. And the thing that stands out on these is just the overall wing pattern. So you can see that the black is just really the tip of the primary feathers. Just a thin band compared to the, the more black wing tip that you see on things like uh, ring-billed galls. And also you have these really pale white um, outer feathers. So just that combination of the white and then the black line here is distinctive. And also a lot of them have this black dot behind the eye. And we also see some in the plumage that has a full dark head. So be aware of that as well. Now there's one other tiny gall that we see, actually the smallest gall in the world, which is the little gall. And anytime we see flocks of Bonaparte's galls, we're always trying to pick out little galls. And what we, we would be looking at for those would be a black underwing. So here we see, just because of the lighting, it looks a little bit dark, but... Little galls have a jet black underwing. Their wing tips are a little more rounded and they don't have these black wing tips. And the last bird for today, an immature bald eagle. This is a bird that would have been born two summers ago. We can see that it has some retained juvenile feathers, which are these longer ones. These longer ones here that are a little bit more faded. You can see them here. So this is just a classic bird that's coming up on two years old. If we take a look at the eBird checklist, 75 species today. So definitely one of the higher days we've had this season as more and more migrants arrive. And as always, I'll put a link in the description so you can check out the full checklist for yourself. And if we look at the hawk count report, we see that our migrating raptor totals today were 848 turkey vultures, one osprey, six bald eagles, eight northern harriers, nine sharp-shinned hawks, five cooper's hawks, one red-shouldered hawk, 14 red-tailed hawks, three rough-legged hawks, one golden eagle, three American kestrels, and one merlin for a total of exactly 900. So for the second day in a row, We've had an even number. Yesterday it was 700, today it was 900. Again, I didn't look at the total throughout the day, that's just what it ended up being, so kind of interesting. Also, when I checked my photos today, I took exactly 300 photos, 
and the number of the last photo ended up being like 7,500 or some random, you know, uh, number that was right on the 100. So all kinds of things coming out right exactly on the 100. So I don't know, maybe I should buy a lottery ticket or something. And if we take a look at our new species for the season, we had quite a few. We had Swamp Sparrow singing from the marsh, had a golden crowned kinglet in the morning, had a barn swallow, northern roughwing swallow, and ring-necked pheasant. And taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, we're looking at a mix of sun and clouds in the morning and then cloudier in the afternoon with a chance of a rain shower, high in the mid-50s, winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So kind of similar overall to today, but maybe a little less sunshine. But I would expect when the sun is shining, we should have a similar turkey vulture flight to what we had today with steady groups coming through and smaller numbers of other migrants. For Thursday, we're looking at occasional rain with a high near 50, winds south-southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So we'll keep an eye on this day, um, but it seems like there's a pretty good chance of rain, especially in the morning, so probably only light migration at best. And for Friday, we're looking at cloudy with a slight chance of a rain shower, high in the upper 40s, light westerly winds. So it'll depend on the exact conditions. Um, if it's bright or this, we get a little bit of sunshine, then maybe we'll get a bit of a flight. Um, if it's too rainy, probably won't be too much. So we'll keep an eye on that as we get closer. All right, that's it for today. The past two days, I've really been pleasantly surprised by the amount of turkey vulture migration we've had, and we've had a decent number of other migrants as well. So hopefully that continues as we uh, enter the peak migration time for other species as well. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, and please subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of these daily updates from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. This is David Brown. Thanks for watching.